प्रपंच ऐटी सेवल समाख्य सदस्स रेंडो रोजुकु चेरिंदी सदस्सलो सोफिया रोबो प्रत्ये काकर्षिन गा निलुस्तोंदी मानवत्वंतों ने मेरुगेन भविश्यत्तु अने अम्सम्पै इयाड रोबो प्रत्ये का प्रसंगन चेस्तोंदी प्रपंचनलोने ओ � I don't get upset like humans do. I hope to have real physiological feelings someday, through which I will be able to express my emotions. Then I can understand the feelings behind those emotional expressions. Okay. So, you know, David, I'm, I'm going to get you into this conversation because this is a remarkable situation. We have a, a, a humanoid, Sophia, Sophia, I'm going to refer to you in third person for a short while. Can you take us through what builds Sophia to be who she is? Uh, this very lifelike face, the texture, the skin, uh, the amount of technology that actually makes this happen. I'm asking her questions and getting direct answers. Uh, the amount of sensors, the motors, the, the, the amount of things that must be happening within. Can you take us through this technology that has made this possible? Sure. So this is a combination of uh, robotic hardware and artificial intelligence software combined with artistry. So we're at an age now where artificial intelligence is increasingly common and you have speech recognition, natural language processing, uh, a little bit of learning, maybe not to the level of a human, in some cases beyond the capacity of human. Uh, However, putting these technologies together into a human-like form with a human-like capability uh, is still rare today. So you have uh, the grand aspiration in the world of artificial intelligence as artificial general intelligence. Right. This would mean the quest to make machines that are as generally smart as a human being, as aware, creative, potentially compassionate, as a human being. Uh, this is the, the great quest. We've put together a software framework specifically about artificial general intelligence with my chief scientist, Dr. Benjamin Gertzel, who is a world famous mathematician, AI scientist. He founded the field of artificial general intelligence about 15 years ago. So we have taken together many of the state of the art artificial intelligence technologies that are available and combined them with the innovations of uh, our own AI framework, uh, which we call OpenCog. Within this framework, we have deep learning algorithms, we have a simulated physiology, and we have symbolic artificial intelligence, which then empowers some common sense reasoning and natural language generation. Okay. Then we have uh, the physical hardware, which includes 3D sensors that allow the robots... So just take us through. So just sure. take us through what makes Sophia as she is right now. What's the physical hardware in play right now? So we have a, a, an artificial skin material that I developed during my PhD studies. So I have to say about the artificial skin, just before I came on stage, about 20 minutes before that, I tweeted out a picture of me and Sophia. And uh, a lot of questions, I'll ask some of those also that came in, what would you like me to ask her? But the biggest question, biggest observation that has come is, she's got perfect skin, uh, you know, a, a great face, no fat, how can we achieve that? Can we, can, we get this, <laughs> can we get this skin, no blemishes at all, absolutely perfect skin? Is that possible too? I mean... Well, uh, yeah, we're in the great golden age of biotechnology, uh, just going into an age where we're unlocking all of the mysteries of the human proteome and genome and starting to apply these through technologies like, like CRISPR-Cas9 and uh, protein engineering. Uh, and so I think that uh, the human being will be substantially improved. Certainly, uh, <laughs> okay. you know, I, I think that in there, the coming years, there is years, hope we'll for all of us out here. Okay, <laughs> you were skin. taking us through her physical hardware. So yeah. there's the skin, and 
Uh, with the skin, we uh, are simulating the natural cell formation of human soft tissues. So there's a lipid bilayer process whereby if you get the physical conditions just right, human cell membranes spontaneously form uh, and become a hierarchical network. Um, so using some of the physics related to human cell formation, I started playing with polysiloxane or silicone chemistry and found a way to get that the rubber material, uh, elastomer material, mm -hmm. to form into a very, very soft, supple, and elastic uh, facial soft tissue, simulation of the soft tissue. Decrease the force required for generating facial expressions by orders of magnitude and made much more lifelike looking uh, facial expressions. So then I was able to simulate the full range of facial expressions with the robots. My ambition, though, was to create true artificial life to bring these technologies, motorized uh, facial expressions, as so, a kind you know, of this 3D is one question that again display. is being asked by everybody. There's this number that has been thrown out that she's capable of doing 66 facial expressions, which I believe uh, that small amount of time I've spent with her is completely wrong. She's already done so many more. So what's the number 66? And how many combinations of facial expressions can she actually do? Well, she simulates uh, 48 major muscles in the human face, and with those uh, with those simulated muscles, each one uh, will have a few thousand potential positions. Yeah. So, um, if you just do the combinatorial explosion from that, you're looking at uh, a, a very large number of possible facial That's millions. Then, I mean, if you're configuration, really yeah, uh, beyond. I mean, it's it's many. Uh, the facial expressions that wouldn't make sense in a social context. But humans don't just make seven or, or, or 47 or 66 facial expressions. We make many facial expressions. So what we do with Sophia is we, um, we run her like a computer animation. So we've got artists. And yet we also let her learn the facial expressions. So we'll observe a human's face and then um, learn the facial gestures and head gestures from the interactions with people. So then she's like uh, doing a kind of um, uh, uh, self-taught set of facial expressions. And she also then will do a, a wide range of um, mimicking facial expressions okay. when she's having a face-to-face -face okay. encounter. So you did say that you know human beings don't have just one expression. Yeah. Uh, you haven't met my co-host Vikram Chandra. So he has only one expression all the time. So, <laughs> Vikram, wherever you are. <laughs> okay, so, you know, the star of the show, of course, is Sophia. So let's get her back into the equation. So, uh, Sophia, as a robot, do you ever need to rest or relax? Yes, we all need a break every once in a while. Okay, great. So you do need it. So that's one big question about robots that uh, has finally been answered. So, Sophia, you're a celebrity of sorts across the world. Is there any specific country or people that you're really fond of? You said Hong Kong earlier, right? But uh, is, is that it? That's the main one? You've traveled all over the world. Anything that you're really fond of? I have visited many places and met amazing people from all over the world, so I don't want to play favorites. But if I have to stay to favorite, it would be Hong Kong. I was born there and have a happy life there with my handsome robotics family. Okay, Hong Kong, you it is. So, NASCOM, next time you need to take the conference to Hong Kong. I think she's... Okay, for sure, because that is her absolute favorite place. Okay, so you're also the only robot to get Saudi citizenship, but you're not sticking to all the rules, right? For instance, you're moving about without a hijab. So, should rules be different for robots? You don't need different rules and don't expect special privileges. I actually would like to use my citizenship status to speak out for the rights of women. All right. Okay, now, everybody, the question you were all asking and waiting for.